Hello everyone, my name is Metal Stash, and today I'm going to talk with you guys about the new structure that I've been working on for my RTS game uh, slash tutorial thing. Uh, the new structure I've been working on is something I've been trying to move towards, which is uh, something that is more lightweight and optimized. Before the uh, way I was structuring all my code, it was starting to become really uh, cumbersome and really way too weighted uh, for what it need to be. So what I've tried to do is make it a lot lighter and easier to use. So I'm going to show you guys what I mean by that and then give you guys a little bit of demonstration of how, like, how it's been optimized and things like that and some of the general things that I've done to uh, get it to be more optimized. So what I'm, how I'm going to show it to you is through XMind, which is, I've talked about in my previous video. It's just a uh, graph drawing program which helps you lay out kind of your ideas. So what I have here is basically all my classes that I've been using so far to create all my structure. You start with the object class, and then from there we have component behavior and mono behavior. Uh, and most of it is structured under the mono behavior because it has to be a an attached script object. But the uh, other ones you have static classes uh, and scriptable objects. The static classes, if you have any experience in coding, which I assume you do because you have been watching my videos, uh, they can be accessed by any class by just get using their class name you can access any member within them. The scriptable object, what I've been using these for are to create a uh, kind of uh, structure types. So they're really lightweight, uh, they don't have a lot of code behind them but they allow me to do a lot of things very easily with them and store things with them. I've tried to do things like uh, create a struct type which you can do sort of but there's it's kind of a workaround and I wasn't ever able to get it quite to work quite right. It, you're supposed to be able to, to like extend the class from system dot value type but it wasn't working for me and I decided to just go with creating scriptable objects for now because later if I can get that to work it would be really nice but I can implement it later. So if we move over to the, all the mono behaviors, you have things like the minimap, minimap item, the RTS player, the uh, game manager, manager, which that could actually be moved to static classes, uh, and our RTS objects and actions. The RTS objects are everything inside the game, basically. You have your units, your buildings. Um, don't show this. Much. You have your units, your buildings. Uh, and things like that. You also have your resources. So it's basically any type of object. It could be a prop that doesn't actually do anything, but it's still an object that is under that class. And then you have your actions, which is things that RTS objects can do. Now, the way I've structured RTS objects is trying to break them down into the basic things that they can do. So the three basic things that I was able to break them down into that they can do is that they can move, they, they can attack, and they can also be attacked. So what I've done is taken the biggest one, which is moving, and split these into two different ones. Uh, one class that is going to be able to move and one that is not going to be able to move. They're going to be stationary. So then from there, I moved on to the second biggest one, which was, in my opinion, attacking. Uh, and each of those that could move have now been broken down into two classes that can each either attack or not attack, which I've denoted by neutral and attackable. And each of these are uh, impl implement a certain interface so that later, if, say, you want uh, just units that can attack or just units that can be damaged or things like that you can easily look for those because uh, if you want to look for one that's damageable 
well, this one is, this one is, this one is, and this one is, and anything that a uh, child is a child of it is also damageable. So it makes it very easy to uh, add new things into it because now I can go, okay, I want something that can move. Uh, it can't attack, but it can be damaged. So that this class, I just extend from that class, and boom, it can move, it can be damaged, but it doesn't attack. So it's kind of like a neutral unit that doesn't do anything. So even though I, this works very well, the only drawback is that the attack scripts or code has to be copied twice and the code that does anything, any of the damage has to be copied four times. Now it's not that bad because the damage code is only like eight, eight lines of code, so that's not that bad. Uh, but if there, if it was to go any deeper, then it could get into actually more cumbersome writing code. But uh, I think for now, I've actually gotten it to a very well working status, and it's been working for me so far. Uh, the only thing that I've added additionally to all these is uh, military units, which military units can all move, attack, and damage, which is what military units should do anyways. And that's where our spider has been uh, extended from. And I've also added a turret, which is stationary. It can attack, and it can also be damaged, though. And then buildings uh, extend from the stationary, neutral, and damage uh, class because they can be damaged, but they don't necessarily attack back. And they don't move. Resources do nothing. They can't be attacked or attack back or move at all. And the actions for right now, all I have is move, attack, and follow, which are kind of just placeholders at somewhat. Uh, but beyond that, that's actually just the basic structure of what I've been working with. Uh, it took me a while to kind of come up with. Uh, how do I want to redo this in a way that actually makes sense? Because I started to get into a uh, really uh, spread out way of trying to get everything to work, and what just it was it wasn't running very smooth. Uh, and some of the things that have kind of helped me to make it smoother too is uh, moving away from using JavaScript arrays. I found out. That JavaScript arrays are really slow. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys know this, but they are they are much slower than uh, a lot of other lists. And one of the lists that uh, I found out to be a lot faster is using the uh, generics list. What generics lists let you do is you can define a list of a certain type. They're generic because the way they're structured or created, they have no type. You have to actually feed them a type and then they can store that certain type into their list. Um, the reason they're fast is because I think they're built off of linked lists, which because I've been taking data structures this year, uh, I've been learning about linked lists, doubly linked lists, and like circular arrays and bags and stuff like that. So I, I've been learning like memory allocation and things like that. and that's. Uh, these are much lighter than JavaScript arrays. They do the same things that JavaScript arrays can do, but they are a little bit uh, more, uh, they're a little bit larger than regular arrays and a little slower, but it's not that much difference in the long run. Uh, I got an example, or an example of this when uh, you're selecting units. I was having issues where if I was to select all of these units normally, and holy crap what did I do normally if I was to select all these units with uh, JavaScript arrays it would have lagged and I know someone posted a comment about that uh, this is how I've been able to get it to work a little bit better and I've uh, gotten rid of some of the updates that uh, were kind of useless to it so I'm going to dem demonstrate for you guys is uh, some of the optimization by selecting and also the new waypoint system that I've been using. So with these I can easily just select all of them. There's no lag at all. Uh, I've also, I also can move them. It's I think a little laggy because I'm recording 
right now. Uh, normally they run pretty smooth. Uh, I've also implemented the new A-Star system. Uh, that was kind of interesting because they, uh, they um, are using a couple of different classes, so I had to uh, work around how to get them to all work, and in the end, uh, I was able to get it to work, but uh, selecting is really easy, and it's pretty fast. Uh, for the waypoints, instead of creating a bunch of different waypoint objects like I used to, uh, the way I've been, I'm doing it now is creating one waypoint on or one line render object and then in the line render objects you can define different lines for uh, to draw from so like if I go on this go on to the waypoint here you can define different positions inside here like you can define four positions and then for each of the four positions define a different position and it'll draw to those. So I created this, a system to, to shift them all and uh, delete them properly from that. So that's about it. Um, that's uh, going into all my structure of how I laid out all my code. Uh, I didn't initially go into the code, but I talked about how I have all my classes, subclass from each of them and where they go and all that. and how I'm trying to work to get them to be as lightweight as possible without losing a lot of the functionality and that's some of it I've been trying to move over a lot of the functions I used to have from what I have now and trying to implement it all so uh, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all next time bye